Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys 10 tips that the game does not tell you. In this guide, we're going to go from some beginner tips, to some intermediate tips, to in-game tips. And I'll see you guys at the end of the video. Tip number one. Now the first tip on this list is going to be for the beginner players. You may be wondering how are you supposed to get started and how you're supposed to get better materials. You're going to want to go to the Dust Bowl, and you're going to hit every single chest that I do as follows. What you're looking for is anything that may be able to be smelted down into metal, such as cauldrons, buckets, pommels, hand guards, and bladed weapons. Now the chests are as follows. You have one up the hill on the back right as soon as you enter the Dust Bowl, as well as one at the back side of the Dust Bowl in the ravine. The third chest would be on your right as soon as you enter the Dust Bowl. The fourth and fifth chest would be up the staircase, up the second staircase, or in this case, I have to climb because the staircase isn't built, and to your left before you climb up the scaffolding. Future Nagasaki here, I forgot to mention that there was a chest on the right side of the scaffolding before you go up it. Heading over to the respawn potion, you would see a chest on its right. The next spot we will be visiting is the mountain pass. After approaching the town hall, take a left and go down the pass. After crossing the bridge, we will continue following the path all the way until we get to the first arch. After arriving at the arch, we will see a map to our right. Pass the map and go straight ahead. We will then take your right. And then at the fork we will take another right. After taking another right, you will more than likely see a bunch of loot scattered around the ground and or boxes. The boxes and vases can be broken and they can also drop copper and or iron items. After collecting our items, we will then take our cauldron and bucket to the crafting house. We will then begin deconstructing our cauldron. Next we will begin disassembling our bucket. After collecting your items, make your way over to the desmelter and toss them in like so. We will begin with the bigger items, that way they can fill up the bottom. We will then begin pumping the furnace and letting it heat up all of the items like so. Afterwards, we can collect our resources and head inside. We will now be adding both of our resources into the smelter, closing it. Now, as you can see, one iron ingot and one copper ingot will equal to one red iron ingot, allowing you to go straight to red iron from nothing. Tip number two. Now, the next tip we're going to be going over is how to easily cook food without a fire. You're going to go to the blacksmith and you'll find these lit torches. You can put around four pieces of chicken into one. After putting them in, they'll take the same amount of time as it does for a fire to cook. Tip number three. Moving on has to deal with an abundance of items on the ground. Now, nobody wants to have to bend down and pick up a bunch of items because one, that can hurt your back. Now, there's an easy solution in game to this, and it is called a net. As you can see, just by swinging the net on the ground like a metal detector, it will begin picking up all of the items on the ground. It can still only hold up to one stack of items. In this case, for cut up pumpkins, it is 30 per stack. To craft a net, we will need three sticks three rope, and one dried grass. Any kind of sticks will work, but in this case, I am using oak wood sticks. And now as easy as that, you have yourself a net. For a side tip, you can also connect many kinds of handles onto a net. I like to use the medium handle, as in my opinion, it gives the net the perfect amount of reach. Tip number four. 
Have you ever found yourself having way too much uncooked food and you want a way to be able to cook it quickly? Well look no further than this tip. All you would need is a chest filled with any item with one slot open. You would then take the piece of cooked food that you are trying to cook and put it into the last slot. You would then take all of the pieces of the uncooked food and toss it into the bottom of a chest like so. The reason we have all of the chests filled up is that way these items do not go into a slot. After placing all of our food in, we would then take a piece of dried grass and place it as close to the bottom of the chest as possible. We would then take our wood and put it around the bottom of the chest like so. Two pieces is typically all you need. Afterwards, we will take our fire starter and start the fire. As you can see, almost immediately, smoke begins rising out of the chest. And just like that, all of your food is now cooked. Tip number five. I'll be showing you guys how to make some money. The first thing you want to do is go up to the televator with 35 crystals. You're going to throw them in and you're going to teleport down to layer 30. After arriving in the mines, we would then begin checking every chest and crate for any possible gold items and or gold coins. Now for a side tip, an easier way of exploring the mines is by taking the cave grass you can find, lighting it on fire, and tossing it. This will stay lit for around 5 minutes, letting you know which way you've also been. Doing this method, you will soon take notice of just how heavy you will become. After inventory is full, or you have noticed that the gold items have quit spawning, we will then go back up to the surface. After arriving at the surface, we will then head over to the blacksmith. We will then take all of our gold items, and throw them into the smelt. We would then begin pumping. Now, as you can see, with just that few amount of items, we gathered 20 ingots. Now, each ingot is worth a total of five coins, meaning we have just gained. Don't you boot me while I'm making a video? Boop. Oh, I'm sorry. You're fine. I can edit. After getting our gold, we will then make our way up to the town hall and put it into the coin press like so. Giving us a total haul of 112 coins for that little bit of time I was in the mines. Tip number six. Now I will be showing you guys how to void storage while you're in the mine. The first thing you're going to want to look for is a rock that is kind of clipping near the ceiling like so. We then teleport up onto the rock and get as close to the wall as possible. Afterwards, we will be sticking through. We will take our bag off and we will take our items and throw them into the void like so watching them to make sure that they do not poof. If they poof, then you will know that they actually hit the floor below and did not go into the void. Now, I would be careful doing this as sometimes the items do not go into your void box. But for the majority of the times I've used this, it has. Tip number seven. Now, some of you may consider this next tip cheating. I'm gonna tell you guys to go make sure to check out my other videos, such as my shrine videos, or my cooking video, or anything like that, as they teach you important tips on how to survive in a township tale. My shrine videos will teach you exactly how to farm XP for that respective branch efficiently, and my cooking videos will show you the best way to cook, as well as the best potions that you need to make. Tip number eight. As you can see, I lost my glow shroom into the lake. And as you can see, when I try to get close to it, I get dunked out and get teleported back to the surface. Now I'm going to be showing you guys the easiest way of being able to get your items back. After grabbing a willing volunteer, they will have to look down towards the water as we kill them.
after a volunteer returns, as you can see, he can walk underwater and collect his items. That's cool. No, that, well, I've, no, Tip I've... number nine. We will be talking about customization for your character. As you can see, I have many characters here that I can choose from that I've created myself. My personal favorite being the maid, followed closely, followed closely by my lumberjack outfit. Now after you purchase cosmetic, or you simply just want to change your avatar, head over to the customization building. Standing on the platform will bring you back into the customization house. You can then edit your avatar, and by pressing this button, you can also see what's in the current store rotation. Tip number 10. We got my personal favorite. Make a farm! I've always find myself running out of food, and there's no spurgers to be found around. So my solution? Make a farm. Making a farm is simple and easy. Let me show you. As you can see here, I have pumpkins, tomatoes, and blueberries. I prefer pumpkins as they are the easiest to grow, but they do require the longest growth time out of all. As you can see here, we currently have one that's ready to be picked. Such as this. You will then take it Take your weapon, break it, and break the halves, and in doing so, you will gain a seed. You can then plant the seed into the ground, like so. The same goes for tomatoes. You'll take an, right, you'll take an unripe tomato, you will then take your weapon, slice it up into halves, take each half, hold it towards the ground, and plant it. If you haven't heard it yet today, I love you, I'm so proud of you, and I'm glad that you're here. I would also like to take this time to give a huge shout out to our channel members, Sir Spamalot. Remember, if you want a chance to be shouted out in my videos, then make sure to click the join button below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye Thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. As a special reward, you will be the first to know that on October 1st, the Roundtable will open up a second server called Tales of the Roundtable. This would be a voodoo modded server with a lot more to do than just the vanilla game. Now make sure to keep this a secret as I only want those who watch to the end of the video to know. And I'll see you guys later.